Last time I made a video, we were outside. I thought that was gonna be a quick install, but that took longer than I expected, and I don't wanna work in the heat anymore. So I moved my parents' car out of the garage, and we are gonna install an IG AOS today. I bought the competition version, but I also bought the street version as well, so I don't need to get a tune for any of that. Street conversion kit, I didn't buy two AOSs. Alright, let's go take a look at it. So this is the IG AOS, just a close-up of everything so you can take a look at it. Right now, I bought, like I said earlier, I bought the kit with the competition version of the AOS. So the out hosing is going to just dump into the atmosphere here, but you need a tune to be able to run that or else your air-fuel ratio will be off. So I bought the street conversion kit, which it comes with these hoses and some other fittings, and that will recirculate the air back into the intake inlet. And it'll be kind of like stock, but hopefully this keeps me from eating more oil than I already am. Hopefully it completely eliminates the fact that the car eats a stupid amount of oil. I'm, chain I'm topping off the oil every like thousand miles, a full quart, so I'm hoping this fixes everything. I had the Grim Speed AOS, which is a cool little thing, but um, I put a clear tube on, and what was feeding back into the inlet was still oil, so I got rid of that thing and I purchased this one. So, for prepping for this install, I already knew that I'm gonna have to remove the intercooler to get to a lot of the hosing and to mount the IAG on the strut area back in that corner. But I'm gonna be removing the intercooler, so that means I'm gonna have to take off the bypass valve. And I also actually had to take off the throttle body. So, knowing that, I already purchased, I'm not, I don't like using the same gaskets. Cool. I don't like using the same gaskets, so I got an extra throttle body gasket for the uh, from Grimspeed, and I also got an extra uh, bypass valve gasket for the bypass valve. <laughs> um, cheap, don't reuse your stuff. Everyone always talks about, oh, I have a leak. Well, maybe if you just spent two dollars on a gasket, you would have been fine. So first things first. I'm going to disconnect the battery and then we're going to remove the inner cooler. Disconnect the battery, we're going to use a 10 millimeter socket. Next thing we're going to do is going to remove the hosing off of this PVC piping and then take off the PVC piping. When I have the Grim Speed uh, AOS on, uh, the line was over here. I didn't have to touch these two ones, so I changed out the clamp for this easier one to deal with. You're probably just going to need pliers to twist the other two off. I'm done. So this thing's just held together by this little clamp here. I just stuck my needle nose plier in it. Oh my gosh, I just pulled it off to undo the clamp. I don't know how I'm going to get that back on if I need to. We're going to start prepping to remove the intercooler. We have two bolts that hold the bypass valve there. I am going to use a 12 millimeter socket to take this out. And there's also a bolt here and down over here where um, holds the intercooler in place. So we're gonna undo all of those bolts. So two here, two here, and then in terms of my clamps, I have two clamps that hold the intercooler to the throttle body here. So I'm just gonna undo those, loosen it up. And to the turbo, there's one clamp right on over here that connects to it. Um, that's gonna be a pain in the ass too. Easy to take off, pain in the ass to put on. This one is a little bit more annoying to get to, and clearly I didn't put this back <laughs> later, but the, the sound generating noise that 
plugs intake sound into the cabin usually covers this so you have to undo these bolts um, they look like 10 millimeter bolts and then underneath it you'll get to this Did mostly everything that is the last piece that's a pain in the butt to get to so I have a clamp already there that I just need to loosen up now that everything is loose the you see that it's pretty easy to take it off so I'm just gonna shimmy the intake upwards and then pull it out not intake, inner cooler. Looks like I still need to loosen that thing a bit. Now that the inner cooler is out, I just want to show you a couple of things. Let's see here. If you could focus on that, there is a it looks somewhat clean on this side, I think. A little bit of residue, but on this side, where it's going straight to the throttle body, there's definitely a lot of oil that's picking up there, and that is not what I wanna see. To make the reinstall of this intercooler a lot easier on your life, switch this out. I have Turbo Smart. Um, what the hell is this called? I'll link it in the bar. <laughs> I don't know, I'm gonna overlay this with a message, tell you what these two parts are. You have to trim it down a little bit to make it fit, but the silicone hose is a lot easier to mount than the OEM plastic one. So the moment you plan on removing your intercooler, buy these two bits here, the silicone Turbo Smart hoses. I wasn't sure if the picture was picking up earlier, but I brought it, the intercooler outside just to show you um, the oil that's being built up over here. So this is the throttle body side. You can see that oil is right over here. That is not what should happen. I use another finger for the turbo inlet side. Definitely oil. For the instructions, next thing I need to do after I remove the intercooler is to take off this rail with a 10 millimeter socket. This is 10 millimeter. Nope. I don't know why, but I'm just gonna listen to directions. So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna be removing the lines, the breather lines from the valve cover. Valve, is it valve cover? What does the instructions say? Blah, blah, valve cover port. Yes. So next, <laughs> what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the breather lines, um, the hoses that connect to the valve cover port, and we're gonna, there's two on both sides over here. They are a pain in the butt to get to, so I'm just gonna try to show you where they are here. I'm on the passenger side right now, and we're gonna go right in over here. So from the rail, this line was removed from one and this line was removed from the other side on the passenger side. And there's that one over there. Easiest thing you can do is follow these lines. This one, this one you're not really following. You're following this line over here. Following this hose, down to this section over here I'm hoping you can see but if you follow that it comes all the way around into these two ports that are here there's two ports here you're gonna remove the one closest to the front of the car so basically the one that I'm trying to focus the light on that one right there we're gonna remove that one, not that one, that one. Let's go on the other side. 
we are going to remove this line and that line connects so as you can see there's two ports here we're removing the one that the light is currently on most front of the car on this side I'm gonna actually remove this freaking sound generator. There we go. One out, let's go to the other side. This one. It's connected to this one. Next thing that I have to do is uh, remove this hose that is connected to the blow by sensor, which is this white one right over here. And we're gonna actually remove the whole assembly that is connected to this. It's a little bit complicated and tight, but I'll show you once I remove this thing. When I had the Grimspeed AOS again, I had to um, I had to fiddle with this before, so my clamp's different than what you would have to use. Probably have to use a flathead screwdriver or pliers or something, so. I'm actually gonna remove the throttle body right now because this is super tight to try to get into this spot. I have to remove it anyways later on. So I'm gonna do that right now. This, I'm using a 10 millimeter. There's four 10 millimeter uh, bolts holding the throttle body in place. It seems like I just need to remove this. I don't need to take out the clips, but I feel like it would be good too anyway. With the throttle body out of the way, and I'm gonna try to remove this assembly that this is connected to. I can now push things around a bit easier to get to this clamp here. There we go. So this is the assembly that you we just removed. We undid this clamp and then I undid the hose connected to this thing here. Undo the hose over undid the clamp over here, undid the clamp here, and then I just wiggled this whole thing out. And IAG, if this is worn out, IAG does supply uh, another one if it's worn out. I might just use the new one just anyway, just because. But we are going to change out this fitting for the one that IAG supplies. So we're going to start using this one in place of this one, I believe. So I ended up still using the exact same one because mine is in good condition and I also don't have clamps large enough to secure the supplied drain hose so I'm going to use the same one I like the fitting of this one I'm just going to put this back right where we found it So 
So the next step that uh, IAG's instructions say is to remove the throttle body. We did that to get to this properly. So there is a there is a hose that's connected to this side of standing on the front of the car. It's on the left side. There's a hose that's right underneath the section of the manifold right over here where the throttle body would be blocking and there's a little pinch clamp that's holding that hose so we're just gonna replace that hose right there just need pliers to undo this cool so this piece if we go back to the original thing that we took out this was like this and this was connected to the elbow here so we just removed this whole assembly here now so you can't see it here but the nipple end of this hose area if this was a comp if i was installing the competition version um, i would be replacing this nipple with um, this block this blocking I just block off that plate, that nipple wouldn't exist. Um, but since we're installing the street version, I'm using the supplied 3 8 hosing and we're just going to secure that on to that hose. Now that the hose is in place, I tightened it down. We're gonna put the throttle body back on. And to do that, it's four screws. Uh, da, 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 da. We're gonna put the Grimsby throttle body gasket on because I don't wanna use the, the one that was there. And then we're gonna put the four screws back on and you are tightening them down to six foot pounds. So I messed up earlier, I didn't have sound. We removed the sound generating tube out of the front. I have a plug on order to fill that in and I'm also gonna replace the plastic piping on this intake inlet so that I could get rid of the other half of the sound generating tube. To get rid, we're gonna loosen up the main wiring harness here. There is a little clip at the bottom that you have to use a flathead screwdriver to unclip the harness from. We're just going to do that right now. There you go. Slide up. You're going to pull up on it to release the bracket there. Next thing we're going to do is we need to create some slack. So there's like some electric tape on the back side here. We are going to undo that. Just gonna cut some of the electrical tape. There's also to create slack in this area for the wiring harness. There's some electrical tape here, I believe they said. Per the instructions, this is the primary O2 sensor, so just be careful when you're cutting the electrical tape here. Um, it should give you some more slack there for whatever, I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go. So now we are going to use a 10 millimeter bolt to remove the wiring harness bracket.
we need to make room for the AOS. So <laughs> this is super sketchy. Basically they said that you need to bend these brake lines closer to the strut and the three brake lines back here closer to the firewall. <sighs> I, okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna lean against it slowly, hoping nothing snaps. <laughs> That's okay. That was just a plastic piece that was holding these lines together. <laughs> So because I have, I originally bought the competition version, I need to replace the, this outlet to the street version, which is this one. Um, there's, looks like I just need to use like a hex key or something to remove this and we'll get on our way. Finally got this piece off. This thing almost, almost stripped it. <laughs> but I'm not gonna mount this on just yet because once I have it fitted, I wanna make sure I have the adjustability to mount it the way that has the most slack for the hoses. So everything's all set. It's pretty cool in here, um, how it's designed to pull air from the top. Basically how it works is oil lines will go through here, oil will drip down to the bottom and back into the case, and the air from the top will go to the inlet. Sweet. I think that's how it works. <laughs> Before we continue on and go back to engine bay, we're going to install the coolant lines on here, which are these two right over here. Um, they just thread in and then you use a 7th, 8th wrench to tighten it up as needed. So just throw those on right now. Let's get to mounting this into the car now. Off camera, I installed the bracket onto the back of the AOS as such. <clears throat> There's three screws that comes with the kit. You just mount it there. After a few test fittings, I found it best for me to use it one from the top, not all the way to the top, but just leave one. And then you put three of the bolts in and then I put the coolant fittings onto the AOS ready as well as the half inch drain, uh, what's it called, drain hose, which I'm going to assume may connect somewhere over here when I was fiddling with that until I look at the instructions. But I'm going to mount this now to this strut tower. I My kit, uh, after the instructions, looking at the instructions, the current bracket, if you were to buy a IAG AOS, um, will use the um, already exposed holes that are here. But because my bracket is older, I've had this AOS for a while, so it uses an older bracket. I have to, I, there's no instructions right now, so I'm going to assume the best and only way I could fit it is by undoing this 10 millimeter bolt here and then using that same bolt to mount the bra uh, mount the IG AOS and using another hole right down over here. So I'm gonna do that right now. It's actually a 12 millimeter bolt right over here that I'll be undoing. undoing. Yeah, this is 13.
For the instructions, there's also a 10 millimeter bolt over here. This bracket that holds, I think, said that it was the power steering line. We are going to uh, install a relocation bracket here. So I'm just gonna, while I'm here, I'm gonna remove this as well. Again, it's a 10 millimeter bolt. the limited amount of space I had I was just um, cranking it down with a hex key to get it tight there's three bolts that tie this thing down um, I don't know what the size is just have to find a hex key <laughs> that nothing was nothing was mentioned in the instructions so that took a long ass time because the clearance I have to work with this like I don't have a wrench to fit within here so Maybe it would have been better to install this out of the car and then undo the nipple that's connected to this end and screw it in. But this is where we are now and we could continue on with the install process. So before we get into fitting the hoses, I want to secure the um, I want to secure the wiring harness. This thing that's just flopping around. Um, Earlier we removed this 10 millimeter bolt from this bracket here and we are now adding this piece that came with a kit is I guess a relocation which is the extension arm. Um, we're going to bolt this down and then we will continue on from there. So I'm having trouble getting the wiring harness over the intercooler bra mounting bracket. So I'm just gonna undo these bolts. One, two, and I should be able, and I'll put it back after. Um, I should be able to get some clearance and loosen this up. Maybe I have to cut some of the plastic or uh, look for more electrical tape to cut to get some more slack out of it. We'll see. 12 millimeter socket. And 12 millimeter socket. Nice. Be right back. I gotta run to Home Depot or Do It Center or whatever to find some hose clamps because we're gonna undo this one and I don't want it to be leaking everywhere. I'm gonna undo another one. It's gonna be a mess. So, yeah. Be right back. I feel like this is impossible to see when the camera is on the tripod, so I'm just going to talk you through what I'm about to do. Where the light's shining, that thing is the bottom coolant hose that routes towards the turbocharger. On the top of the reservoir expansion tank, there is this line here. The top part of this hose Right now it connects all the way down to this hard pipe on the top of the turbocharger. So this line goes snakes down onto the hard pipe of this turbocharger. What we're going to do is that from here the coolant is going to flow to the top. This line here will connect to there and it'll go through, cool the air, air oil separator, and the bottom line, um, the bottom coolant line of the AOS will snake around, and that's what this one is. 
we're going to replace that with that. We will also, just to let you know, we'll also be securing the hose that connects to the hard line as well as this hose that connects to the top uh, with the supplied clamps. They, you just use pliers to pinch it open and it'll clamp on. So that's dope that they supplied it. We're gonna need to do some trimming to make sure that it's not so loose, but yeah, let's just get things where they need to be. I just secured the coolant line to the top, to the AOS here, and I secured the bottom coolant line to the hard pipe on the turbo turbocharger. I'm a little upset because I think it, it's manageable, but I cut this a little too short for my taste. I'm gonna call IAG and see if they could send me another one, but that'd be awesome if they could, and I'll replace that and it'll be perfectly fitted. The bottom one looks good. So I'm going to start working on the drain line, which is going to go through this small hole in the heat shield and into that T part of the pipe on that little PCP pipe. Is that what it's called? That's here. I just need to trim it down a bit to get the right fitment. I'm not happy with that, so this might take a few efforts, a few tries. What am I talking about? Just a peek of what I just did. So the bottom drain line right over here, focused at the bottom of the AOS, comes around through this small hole on the heat shield and onto that elbow part of the plug. So there's still a hole opening here and there's still a hole opening there and there's the, this one and the two on the sides. Almost done. The next thing on the instructions is to find the... Fuck. So the next thing that is on the list is to find the 5 8 hosing, which is this one, I believe. Yeah, 5 8 hosing. And we are going to trim 3 inches off of one side and place it on one end, and the rest of it will go on the other end. You zip tie it or clamp it, whatever you want to do. So we just put the elbow in to the top of that drain valve that was here. And so it sticks out 3 inches. That plastic elbow comes around, and the rest of the 5 8 hose snakes underneath this bracket around and we are going to be mounting it to the bottom of that like that we're going to zip tie the other end All right, so for the next hose, we're gonna do, we're gonna deal with the middle one here. And we are gonna use the half inch hose. This one's a lot longer than the rest of them. And that is gonna be snaked from the middle, again, middle one, all the way around. And we are actually gonna go to the driver side here into that port right there that we pulled out earlier. So we're going to snake the middle hole to that and then zip tie both ends. So for the 
last bit of hose, that half inch hose that we cut from the driver's side breather port, wrapped it to the center. Uh, we cut off some hose and this actually is what we're going to use to port the, uh, this hose will connect to the passenger side breather port and we're going to wrap it, route it to the top here and the instructions say to go underneath the, between the main wiring harness and the in, uh, injector cover here so just right underneath here should be a pretty straight path and then we'll trim off the excess once we are good So with that last remaining hose uh, that I had, I cut two inches off of one side and attached it to uh, the provided L bracket or L pipe. I don't know. This, I'm gonna take off of this piece and connect it here so that this will go here and route to the left side and the excess will be used. So I decided I gotta remove these clamps before I finish up here because they're just so ugly and I think they will get in the way as I try to install that last hose at the end. So at least they're easy to take off. Top one, down around underneath the bracket, underneath the wiring harness, towards the passenger breather port, forward most uh, breather port there, here to down there. Can you even see it? Yes, you can. The one on the right, basically. Middle, middle line underneath the pitch stop, underneath the pitch stop around towards the right set breather port, which is over here. And the bottom one bottom one around to this right over here the very bottom the drain port comes all the way around through the hole over here also connects to that piece but to the elbow of it if you can see there then that's it let's zip tie a few things make sure it's all nice and tidy i need to mount the wiring harness to that bracket and just fiddle around with it and put the intercooler back on hopefully everything's good IAG air oil separator is finally installed. Uh, 
couple of things I didn't show on camera. Hopefully, um, top hose right over, over here, the originally how I had it routed, it went underneath the intercooler bracket on this side and it was actually touching the, um, I forgot what this thing is called the internal wastegate of the turbocharger. So I didn't want that to actually interfere with any of the pins and moving valves. So I moved this around up and over, over the intercooler bracket and straight to the um, breather port there. I also replaced the, um, the clamps I had on the on the plastic piece here that was that had like a that T plastic I had clamps on there earlier it got in the way when I was trying to install this hose so don't even bother trying to use clamps with this thing just use the uh, supplied zip ties and you'll be good I really hope to get this replaced I'm gonna call IAG tomorrow and hopefully they could do that um, got the wiring harness installed it was a bit of pain in the butt you just had to pull yank on it get that 10 millimeter bolt in and bolt that in um, removing this bracket helped a lot in just maneuvering around um, it was two i think 12 millimeter bolts or something like that both of them i torqued down to 11.8 12 foot pounds uh, according to the service manual um, we are going to just put on the intercooler now. Thanks so much for watching. I'm, I don't know how long this intercooler is going to take me. It's a big pain in the butt to do, but uh, I really appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you have any questions, please comment them below. Again, like and subscribe. I'll try to do more install videos for you as soon as I can when I have the budget for it, or if people send me parts to install. So, it was fun. I think that's about it. Oh, I have on order the inlet, the plastic inlet for the stock intake. The sound generator, you have to complete re completely remove.